Welcome to part 3 of our playthrough of Forcer's Mail commentary mode. Um, if you haven't watched part 1 and 2, I would highly recommend you watch them, and uh, then we can continue with chapter 3. Yes, so here we have the junkyard, which is inspired from, obviously, the level in Portal 2. And we wanted to go a bit further and make it a little bit more expansive and like this is basically where all the trash and rubbish was thrown down to. And you saw over there some text with hashtags. Um, that's obviously gonna get fixed. Um, because we're playing a few days before release. And that's uh, one of the things that we fix up in the next few days. Yeah, the review copies went out and like obviously they were fine, but then we're just doing like very like small last minute fixes and stuff with like subtitles and text files and stuff, so Yeah, we had to change over a few things uh, for localization. Yeah. And that's uh, what causes that hashtag to appear on screen. So here once again, um, you see the orange gels getting and blue gels getting pumped up. Yeah, and this office got redesigned, like, completely from the original. And you also meet Virgil. Hello, Virgil! So, um, Virgil's telling you to turn the power on, but a fun little fact is you can actually just stay and annoy him. <laughs> and he gets more and more frustrated with you the more that you keep trying to pick him up. Um, <laughs> to get the sort of animations working here, I had to use, it's actually a prop dynamic here, there's actually four different Virgils in this map, there's the one who, who actually talks, the NPC Virgil who lives in Global Ents, then there's this one who animates, then there's one when you put him on the rail later, and then one that you pick up, because the NPC personality core that you can pick up has a special ability that obviously you can't drop it, so you couldn't like, you know, throw him somewhere and like, you know, out of your reach or something. And for some reason the scenes wouldn't work with animations, like I did build some animations into the scenes but it kept saying the AI was too busy so that was our best compromise to try to fix it. So three Virgils died in the making of this level. <laughs> Check. No, I'm playing this level with three yeah, Also this is a puzzle that I came up with, like it would be cool to have like electricity and water again, like sort of like throwbacks to the older games, like Half-Life 1 kind of did this kind of style of thing, and it gets reused a couple of times like later on in the mod, well, at the oh. end. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the particles here are also customly designed uh, for this, and, like we have like the, the cable of electricity that electrifies the thing, and uh, and yeah, this, this map has a lot of easter eggs in it if you explore the offices and stuff. Like, there's offices for each of the team members, like the bottom one here is Chris's office. And then uh, me and Dan are upstairs. <laughs> it's the executives, it's like... Uh, <laughs> Looking down on him. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm like, I'm, I'm the person who needs most caffeine. Coffee machine and five billion cups. Plus a vent that's letting us steam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's Stephen's office. Explore that yourselves. Yeah, we're not gonna spoil everything. Yeah, there's lots of like secret stuff we haven't talked about already. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go back here. So here we have a little joke thing and. Virgil goes in and like tries to get the elevator working, but then he just turns the power off and then. And it gets turned off and on a couple of times. That, wasn't me. that was close. <laughs> but yeah, the only thing that really survived from the old map was my elevator shaft thing here. Oh. The like circular elevator shaft. And, then, like, and the idea of the power turning on and off. Yeah. And like, this actually also gets actually turned off. Not that I think anyone's going to be going back there. No, it does. It does. Like, we'll yeah, again, this area was you, you made it and it was perfectly clean, and then I went and smashed everything, and there's holes in the roof. Again! Yeah, there's holes in the roof and everywhere, and pipes and all that fun sort of stuff. And then my lift here has stayed the same, it managed to survive, where there's a little peak where you get to see some panels and arms and stuff. Again, I use like the sort of small lights version to make them look further away and stuff, you know.
Ooh, unusual loading screens there. That's very unusual, yeah, that shouldn't happen. Um, so here I come up with the idea of a left transfer system, because I always thought it was weird that the left can only go up and down, so if I actually look behind you, I have like a sequence of like panel arms and stuff that actually grab the track and yeah, and they allow the left to move horizontally and stuff. So I figured, you know, that's really how the left you know, would get about rather than just straight up and straight down. And this map started off as a... You know, a clean style map, and again, I got the time with destroying it. But like, the style that I went for was I really love the art therapy style. Although the art therapy style is very, very open with like expansive vista style areas. So as you can see, like, I did just sort of little bits, like I'd rip like tiles off the ceiling because like it couldn't be destroyed. It was still got to be clean. But like, I hate the clean theme on its own because like the PTI has kind of ruined it. It makes it look boring. So if you look up here, Anna, like you can see, just like it's like. Not destroyed, but it's just, it's almost like unfinished. Like yep. it's just like, they were putting the tiles in and stuff, but they just didn't quite put everything in. So you get little tiny glimpses into small BTS areas. So that was kind of the style that I, I decided to go for, for all of these maps. Yeah, and I think they turned out really well. And like, it's, it's recognizable, but at the same time, it's slightly different. Yeah, it's also just been a boring, like clean theme, like sort of like, you know, just, they just didn't ever get around to fully finalising the chamber and obviously we didn't do reconstructing theme which is one of my favourites mostly because the reconstructing theme sort of is what symbolises Gladys's return to power and stuff so this is sort of like pre that because obviously she's offline at the minute because this is before Portal 2 happened so Virgil built this track himself but like he never really got around to finishing it and stuff. And there's a super, super cool easter egg in this room. And it's super, super hidden. Yeah, if you ever find it, I will be very impressed. Yes. <laughs> I'm just very, very cruel when it comes to easter eggs. And what's really cool, um, there is um, special music for in the funnels. And this is the first level that uses funnels, so like, I'll just go in the, the funnel and you will hear, like, it's, um, it's actually a custom track and you can find it on the soundtrack. Yeah, and but unlike they... in this, in Portal 2, like where they just had sort of one funnel track, every single like level which has its own track then has a custom funnel version of that track where like he took out like drum noise and stuff and made it sort of alien kind of sounding. Yeah, it's really cool. And then like it continues where it left off. This is <laughs> one of my favorite puzzles again. Um, this is one of those puzzles you'll either complete first time or be stuck for hours and hours and hours on because like when I first played this I got stuck for so long on it and it turned out to be so simple. And the best thing I personally think about this level is um, that like it's literally a box with a wall in the middle and like that's it. And outside you can see like that it's um, again a bit more of an expansive view for this area just with like the pipes and stuff with the cubes flying through and a big fan just which eventually became obviously our chapter menu so just this was sort of the style that I was going for so it's like it's like art therapy but like light version of it like it's not like the full like you're in a big reservoir area just because obviously the compile times and stuff are just not fun whenever <laughs> you make big maps like that in Hammer. No, and like, uh, pretty much every level in the mod has two um, puzzles in it, so yeah. it's a hell of a lot of work to uh, get a, a chamber like that. And like, yeah, in fact, it already it... took us four years, to, well, three <laughs> years, to make this, so you know. In fact, the fun thing about this is the, the, the detail I put in it with the huge fan area is actually bigger than this whole level itself. Yeah. <laughs> so that's always fun. And like, we are aware that you can s you can also solve this level without even using the orange gel by just flinging really quickly, but we're nice people so we give you the option of using the gel. Yeah, a lot of levels actually have sort of not really alternate solutions, but you know, just, I suppose there are alternate, but like just ways of solving it without using certain test elements, like if you're really, really skilled at it, but you know, there's always other ways. Yeah. 
so hard light bridges, and that means that this is paint fling. Yeah, the maps have been reorganized, shall we say, quite a lot. So, like, we tried to keep some sort of difficulty curve and keep obviously the harder levels for later, but because the maps change quite a lot, then the maps order changes quite a lot as well. And what's really funny here is, um, like, light bridges get turned on and off at the beginning of the get of the level, and um, if you save and load the game, the gel on the light bridge would disappear, which is, can be really frustrating, so we can actually save and load the game again, and then we are very, very nice people. And if you've painted the bridge, it will be repainted again for you. Yeah, there's loads of like teeny tiny paint sprayers which spray it for you. In fact, there's a fun thing where if you put like the tiniest amount of paint on the bridge, it doesn't matter how little, whenever you come back it will all be perfectly painted. And yes. again, like if you look about, like all the little areas where you can see behind the panels, like there's all sorts of like stairways and pipes and you know, little behind the scenes views that you can look at. Here you have a little room. And, uh... Yeah, like up upstairs here, up where the lasers are. Yeah, oh. there's like, yeah, that's a really annoying bug that you can actually fall through that light bridge, but there's nothing we can do about it. That's just the way the portals work. But yeah, like in here, there's like a little catwalk which leads into the observation room and stuff like that. Like, whether anyone ever notices this kind of stuff is will be interesting anyway. Yeah, like, you have the, um, the cubes that come through here, and they actually loop around this entire track. Yeah, and there's also, like, loose tiles sitting about as well, as mentioned, like, it's sort of just not finished yet. Yeah. And so they're just, you know, they're about you... to be installed. Uh... You can yeah. just jump down here, so... Yeah, oh, whoops. Yeah, you can just jump down, or you can just use portals, but... You can actually jump into this behind-the-scenes area, and... I like to see these guys. I had to make it so you couldn't stand on them, unfortunately, because you could then like get stuck whenever they tried to move into the end, so they just sort of move underneath you, which is very unfortunate, but had to be done for gameplay purposes. But yeah, you, you saw the, 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 the cubes over there, and then they come out here again. Yeah, unlike Valve, we didn't have custom animations with the cubes, so they're actually like moving along path tracks and stuff. And we we obviously went for that rather than using physics-based ones, which a lot of people tend to use, because they can really, really badly mess up if they get stuck and stuff, and also they make the most annoying noise ever. So we went with path tracks and like little spinnery things on them that make it look like they're rotating and tumbling about. Yes. And... That's a fun fact, it means that every single time you play the game it's slightly different what it spawns. Yeah, and there's a little timing, uh, random timing, and like you can see some cubes are closer than others. I think over here the ratio is 50-50 between normal and companion cubes, and it's different for every level. Okay, and like, one of my favorite things to do is just rip out the ceiling, as I did here, and find a nice place to stick a projected texture, just to make nice shadows. And this is uh, a puzzle that exclusively uses the orange funnel, like we use the blue funnel a lot, but this one only uses the orange funnel. Yeah. And, uh... and in this next room, I, I was very lucky with this light that looks kind of like a projected texture, but it's actually just an incredibly high light map scale. Uh, like, just it's just a normal light, but just a static one. But I think it go off with good shadows. And again, like if you look in behind, there's like loads of detail and like catwalk that like goes around and stuff. Yeah, this is one of my favorite puzzles that you came up with. It's just very, just heavily on like portal placement and like which portals you've placed and like that's the entire puzzle. Just remembering and which ones are the right ones to use. Yeah. It's not this easy when you're solving it yourself. <laughs> oh shit, I did that wrong. What's this thing? Fizzle on you? Yeah, if you wonder what the red laser field thing is, that's just a shortcut once you do beat it, so you don't have to do this again if you needed to get yeah, the cube back. Yeah, because we are nice people. Um, originally, like, if you would, like, lose your, uh, oh, whoops. If you would lose your cube, you had to do this entire area again, which is incredibly frustrating. And, like, 
we we don't want people to be punished for trying things out. And yeah. so like as soon as you hit that button that will like deactivate this area and you will just be able to easily get your hands on this cube again. Like this the, this field activates again but you can now get this out of here and like if you need a new cube you can just come over here and respawn it. Yeah, we tried to you know put in as much of this kind of stuff. Like, our puzzles are definitely difficult, but we tried to always be fair and like not sort of crazy skill based, like ridiculous flings and stuff. Like our pre precision movement, it's pretty much all just you know logic based. So yeah, this was actually one of the puzzles that Chris came up with, although the little laser room like is an amalgamation of one of your puzzles. And again here, with the little details, there's uh, like a door panel that's been ripped open like near where the door is and like it sparks whenever you put the cube on it and there's like some blood on the tiles, like some test that clearly tried to rip it off. And, yeah, they tried to like hack the door open or something and like every time you put the cube on, on the button you can see that it sparks like if this is, you know, controlling the door mechanism. Oh. So some unlucky test subject tried to escape. And we've got Faith Plate up next, which is a combination of mine and your puzzles, but it was it was built in yeah, and it was built by Chris, although I did a bit of extra detailing and most of the detailing in the second room. Yeah, but, yeah this yeah. is... Uh, I, I think this is the, the, the most collaborative map in the entire mod. Like, yeah, there's, got... there's bits and pieces of everyone in this map, really. Yeah, like, the laser part of the puzzle is mine, and then, like, smashing your face against the light bridge is mine, and then, like, the... Yeah, you got with like you didn't actually block the laser yet, but yeah, Chris got with the part with like you know going out to get the cube and stuff like that. Yeah, and I did the, the recollection area. Top. Yeah. Which is uh, something we do a lot. Yeah. But yeah, it was sort of, there was this is like, someone, I think someone commented comment before that looks like a Wheatley style chamber, even though it's not, it's just basically a game with a sort of unfinished style chamber. This was one that Chris made. I did do a bit of extra detailing, particularly like loads of extra like silhouette models and ripping parts off the roof and stuff. Yeah, especially here in this bottomless pit. Yeah, it was a bit bare before. And like, as I said, like mostly ripping stuff off the ceiling. <laughs> And also a little thing that I did was in the glass, you can see the Aperture Laboratories logo. I did that quite a few times in the mod, just I think it looks pretty cool. You get branded glass. And on the other side of the glass we inverted the overlay, so obviously all the text is back. They, they do match up, yeah. Yeah. Because the overlays would not show on both sides. It's also really interesting, for some reason, in Portal you don't have a shadow as a player. I just noticed again. Uh, when you're in third person, you do. It's to yeah. do with the protective texture works. Yeah, it's fairly silly. And then we get the trap, which you can totally just avoid by just walking past. Because A just is incompetent. Yeah, uh, or at least very very slow. And uh, this is a little area I designed, just a little BTS transition area. I think I actually ended up in the trailer because Harry quite liked it. Yeah, and what's also really funny once again, you saw that the cubes fly through the BTS here and the, this matches up and it's actually the same set of cubes and you will see the continuation of that yeah. over here uh, again. And this area, this, uh, this puzzle, like I completely like had to redesign all the detailing on it. <laughs> and there's like a little lift like transfer thing going in the background, which happens constantly, and it's, it's random whether the lift will go straight up or go up and left and up and up or left and down and stuff. So you can like look in and see that happening and stuff. And like yeah, and like this is like the the, the mechanic that's also used um, in the lift uh, transfer you went in in the yeah, previous map. Just gives you a chance to see what it looks like, you know, from a different perspective and not being on the lift. And like to do this sort of style, as you can see, like there's loads of like 
tiles and stuff basically I would just rip out the whole wall put in the square beams and then I would make like a 30 by 30 unit tile and then just copy and shift drag it everywhere to make the sort of as you can see there's like a scattering of tiles everywhere like you know it's very sort of broken up I mean it's not destroyed they're not like bent or broken off or anything like there's just a bunch of them missing yeah they just it was never finished yet so I'm quite happy with the, this particular style and again, you can see more cubes and stuff flying up above. Yeah, and once again, it's the same set that actually flies through the first room. Mm -hmm. So this was a puzzle that me and you came up with. Like, I came up with the idea of like having a faith plate where you get blocked by a funnel and stuff, and then <laughs> you come up with the rest of it. Like, I'm pretty good at like usually coming up with ideas, and then Anna's very good at like expanding the ideas into a puzzle. <laughs> Yeah, and this is... I really quite like this puzzle. This is uh, one of the few le few maps that requires a bit of timing. Yeah, we still get plenty of time, but yeah. it's like... Yeah, that is like... There. <laughs> that was like the speed that you need to do it. Yeah, like... And it's, it's easy enough to reset if you did do it wrong. There's another lift transfer down below. Hold on. Activating the elevator. No. Yeah, we have a little story bit here that holds up the lift. And you go down into another lift transfer. Which we which became sort of a story mechanic that you were using this to avoid uh, ages. And also yeah, kind of go to different testing tracks. Yeah. It kinda of makes sense like as well. <laughs> It gives a bit of a reason behind perhaps the difficulty of the levels being a bit strange because you're not on one continuous testing track, you're just sort of sporadically going about between random testing tracks. Yeah, and like the last two were supposed to, well, the last three were supposed to be Virgil's testing track, and then now we go to an introduction testing track, and so like we're now pretty much halfway through the mod, and this is the part where we have the room with the cube and the button and. A brand new yeah, just to sort of... <laughs> yeah, like, and like... Really I was, it's start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, we we um, try to like, have a few chambers, fairly heavy on puzzles, and then have... Um, yeah, story-focused exploration yeah. maps in between. And like, like Firestorm was one of them, and this is one, uh, one, uh, one of the other ones. Well, this gets fairly heavy on puzzles later on, but... Yeah. Well, you get overgrown after as well, which is partially transitions down that. Yeah, this room was designed by uh, Jacob, or I work 95. Yeah. Like, this, this entire map has taken almost a year to build, uh, because it's incredibly big and very, very detailed. Yeah, I did a bit of detailing, just like minor stuff about the person, like okay. there was certain parts he didn't do like the puzzle and stuff, yeah. like your puzzle and stuff, so... I, I, I made pretty much the very rough layout, and um, originally this had a very weird office section, and that completely got reworked into more BTS. Well, this yeah. was also one of my favorite project structures, with all the shadows moving around. But yeah, so I didn't really do that much in this level, like just minor details like signs and pipes and vents and overlays and stuff. And yeah, the... and <laughs> we, we wanted to um, also have stuff flying through tubes in this level, but um, this already is file size wise the biggest map in the mod. It's about 145 megabytes. Which is really big for a portal map. Plus, it doesn't really make sense anyway. Like everywhere would have it because obviously Gladys is shut down at this point. So, like, presumably a lot of the areas are still pretty dead. And uh, here, there's some very, very funny logic. Um, if you like bring this cube with you before going here first, you get like, oh, if you've done this before or something. And um, if you don't bring it along, then it gives you a hint to go back. Like, that way we have set up a bunch of, well, branching dialogue, really. Uh, yeah. Over here you can choose to um, do a jumpy puzzle, um, which is pretty much like a little training for a little technique you can use in the next test chamber. Um, but it's, it's a little bit annoying sometimes. Right. So you can also choose to... Uh, 
Never finished. Just yeah. slight. That was done like literally last week. Like the review copies didn't even have this. They were forced to do the fling, but we found it to be very, very annoying. And as we've stated, we tried to make the mod as much as possible not be about precision maneuvers and stuff. And here I added a bit of dirt on the floor to try to give a, a small clue as to where it might be useful to place your cube because it matches up with the portal surface here. Oh, there actually is an alternate way to do it without using the funnel. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's a lot of various different ways. Like, we, we were not opposed to alternative solutions as long as, like, there's still puzzles you have to solve. Like, if you do one or two different things, slightly different, but, like, you still actually have to solve a puzzle, that's completely fine with us. But yeah, as long as the, the puzzle wasn't like completely broken and like ruined. Yeah. Because I mean, there's still a lot of the ultimate solutions require like just very clever thinking and still a lot of skill, so you know, you shouldn't be punished for that. And like Portal 1 had a lot of alternate, like sure, there was that one level where you could just fling straight into the exit and that was completely broken. But again, that was just like skill with your flinging. And we have your patented death fizzlers here. Yes. <laughs> Which didn't grab the cube. No, 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 I know. Oh, that was the wrong portal. That was silly of me. <laughs> oh, come on, seriously. <laughs> But yeah, this map used to have a human-only button in it, which was a pretty interesting mechanic, but we decided to take it out because we only ever used it just for that it's... one thing. Yeah, that made this puzzle significantly harder, but... Um... Yeah, it was a bit strange, like we didn't have a custom button for it, which is like, I think sign. it was like a weird sign, yeah. yeah. And again, we have like a sort of, this was inspired by Portal 2, where you can go into the chamber that Gladys asks you to go into and you get killed. There's a lift that you can go into here, which is actually a trap lift and it will kill you. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, our second ending of the game, like, you can just uh, game over here if you go in here. You'll have a little bit of time. No, 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 what are you doing, etc, etc. Yeah, because it's so, uh, like, ingrained in the player's head to go into a lift at the end of a test chamber that most people probably will just walk straight into it, even though they're told it's a trap elevator. So yeah, like, it's down. literally said before, like, it's a trap elevator. Virgil shouts at you. <laughs> this, is a, this is a really, really funny trick. Like, it looks like this entire room is now offline. But in fact, there are actually just black brushes in front of the window and the door, like, and the, the grating over here. So, like, at the moment, it looks like you can't do anything here. But, like, as soon as you do turn the power on, you get a flash and then... The brush is disabled, and then you can see the actual test chamber. Yeah, I still remember the original version of this test chamber, but it's the most complicated test chamber in the entire game, yeah. even though it's not a particularly difficult puzzle. Yeah, this the logic alone for this map um, <laughs> took uh, over a day, and normally logic takes like a few minutes once you figure out. Oh, whoops! How to actually you know, how you want to solve the puzzle, but because you solve three different puzzles in literally the same room, it's it's very, very complicated. And you can see the level change in front of your eyes, and there are all kinds of brushes that enable and disable, uh, because there were all kinds of weird glitches that happened. Yeah. Uh, again, like this puzzle was designed, like the three stages and stuff, by Anna, but uh, it was Jacob who built the level. Yes. How about a hard life bridge? Mm. 
so this time we have a laser to burn some nasty turrets. And we have the light bridge. And I think you can guess what's coming up with those annoying panels blocking the laser catcher. <laughs> And especially this part, there are all kinds of like white surfaces that suddenly enable um, that gave some problems. Oh, and that's uh, all resolved now. <laughs> and background for your third and final go. Yeah, originally there were four stages, but um, stage. Two, stage, stage, stage two only added the light bridge, and then stage three added the turrets. And we decided, like, yeah, it doesn't really add much. Like, yeah, it wasn't worth it. Like, it didn't really add to the puzzle enough to make it fun. Also, I was nice enough to add a grating underneath this piston <laughs> lift because you could originally just fall straight through there, which that was kind of cruel. Yeah. Bam. Then once we go out here, we secretly trigger like five hundred different. Brushes again to uh, make it work. Yeah, also, I little a little red light here myself and like some pipes and stuff just because it kind of draws the attention downwards for once and you can see like just it's a big massive pit. <laughs> and again, like just ripping t t tiles off and stuff like that. And here you get a dirty old lift. I think the texture was redesigned by. Was it Cam then, did it? I think so. I'm not sure, honestly. Yeah, well, <laughs> we got a retexture of the lift, which has both on and off versions of the light, both clean and dirty. And like, we really wanted like a dirty looking lift just that's been going through the old, like, you know, plant fill test chamber and it's like stinking. <laughs> so this is overgrown and this is the level that I work very heavily on. And this is just sort of a transition into obviously the overgrown section, which is part of the story. Is that I just can't really detect you very well amongst all the plants and stuff. And it's quite interesting to this part because I decided, as you can see at the end there, like to put like a broken chamber and like have white light coming from the side rather than the top, which overgrown maps are usually lit by. But I think it came out pretty nice in the end. And if you look behind you when you jump out, you can see the lift break away and tumble down, thankfully without doing it. And it's actually super funny if you no clip out before um, and hit the trigger, <laughs> oh, yes. it goes rotate, like it goes upside down and rotate around and it's incredibly funny, I highly recommend doing that, it's really really funny. Yeah, the lift just constantly rotates and the project detector spins with it. And this door here is like one that I'm sure you've seen a lot of. Uh, this is from the the trailer I'm sure you've seen the stairway. Just we loved it so much. It was again it was originally made by this this room alone was made by Jacob, although I had to fix it because it was specifically designed to be viewed only from that angle. Yeah, from that angle, so I had to fix it up so you could actually walk around mm. it just because I liked it so much. Yeah, and like um, there's also in the main menu, like it's everywhere, and it's just a fairly insignificant uh, Yeah, it's just there's, it's of no importance at all. And then we're back to just this office that I designed. It's sort of based off like a kind of mission control type thing with like the big screens and like sort of central area. And like we have Virgil, and if, if you look closely, as he goes through the plants there, he like twitches, like because he has to go through like a big like pile of things and stuff. So again, it's like a little subtle thing. I don't know if anyone will ever pick up on that. <laughs> It's quite a fun room to design, although I did kind of a blank on it when I was making it and I wasn't sure what was really going gonna go for, but I think it turned out quite nice. No. And like, this sequence was a total pain. Uh, Lone Wolf has done this, Steven has done this, um, with all the um, scenes and logic for it and all the animations. Yeah, there, there, there's like hundreds and hundreds of animations on the cores, but like only about 20 of them were actually of any use. So it's just I had to bury them and I, I recorded how long all of them lasted and all and just mixed and matched and buried them all up just because I said for some reason it, it wouldn't work properly if I tried to do it using the like face pose or thing. But oh well. I, I did my best to make them like kind of bring them to life. Um, I think it turned out quite well. And this, this puzzle, um, at some point we had this uh, rotated 
three yeah. degrees, I think. It was actually, it was seven degrees, and it was just to make it, you know, because it looks cool having like a slanty chamber, but V-Rad did not enjoy it at all, and it kept causing really bad lighting errors and stuff, and like it did look cool, like the slantiness to it, but and it was kind of disorientating, just the fact that the entire place was rotated, but we eventually had to cut it. Or it was just, you know, not have it slanted. I think it was originally 7% and then we changed that up later to 3% because 7% was too strong, if I recall correctly. Yeah, plus originally the laser, like you couldn't have, you couldn't redirect it because of the angle and stuff and the way that lasers come out of portals comes out straight rather than like in the direction of the actual thing, but I had to re-detail this entire map and like if you look to your left and right you'll see like loads of little areas and like behind the scenes areas you can like look in and stuff. Yeah. As as per with every thing, like you can see, like those catwalks, particularly at the button behind the button there, like I actually forgot about them myself. I was like, I was like, well, what's that? And he's like, oh yeah, I forgot about me at that. Like I've just <laughs> made, like that was kind of the thing that I did. I was just like, I would go per room and just like rip out a particular section. As I said, it's usually the roof, but occasionally it's like the walls and stuff. And then just, you know, feel free to obviously look in, and you'll see all sorts of little details and stuff. This is a very old map as well, and again, like I redid the detailing here because I originally did it, and then it just wasn't up to scratch. Like two years down the line, when I got a lot better at detailing. Yeah, like there's there's a lot of stuff that uh, we we've learned like while working on this mod, and yeah, you know, like we we went back and reworked a bunch of areas to uh, better live up to um, our current standards. Yeah, which uh, kept changing all the time, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah but, like, at, at some point, like, last year, when we uh, went to Greenlight, we had a pretty good idea of <laughs> what the standard was, what we were going for, and... Um... Yeah, we definitely pushed for to be equal to, if not try to better files quality. Which um, is obviously not an easy task to do. No, no, absolutely not, and, like... Oh. No! Ugh. But like you could theoretically, you know, work on levels forever, but eventually the amount of difference you're gonna make isn't gonna be worth it. But yeah, I have a nice, again, projected texture here from... There's a spinning fan in the ceiling which makes a nice projected texture. I spotted this level actually, I took a, a nice screenshot of this level and then I spotted it being used for a lot of the cover articles on us for Greenlight, like a lot of the people seem to like the detailing in this level. Yeah, I think it's from the door looking up. Yeah. And that is the first overgrown test. And I just uh, I just noticed that we didn't cut uh, fr from the previous chapter because we are actually in a new chapter. So, hey, extra bonus for uh, chapter three. And chapter four yeah. is going to be a very long one anyway, so um, we will step in the elevator and then uh, load Who up the next level next? on the new video. Hooray! Yes.